What is up guys, Speed here, and today we are going to be learning about Meepo. Now, I'm not personally a Meepo player myself, I want to make that very clear, but what I will say is that Aces, the safe lane slash mid player for NIP, and what we'll be doing is primarily looking at his farming patterns and what he does to ensure that he's going to carry a good Meepo game. The main thing to snowball as this hero is primarily his ability to farm faster than everyone else, in especially in games where they can't apply map pressure or they simply can't kill a high HP Meepo. Now before we hop into the main content of this video, I just want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros and have over thousands of different options over at GameLeap.com. Now let's get into the main video. So this game in particular I found, it's about a month old now, but basically everything stayed the same about Meepo. This is a last pick Meepo game. And let's briefly go over the draft. So looking at NAP side, they have a Darkseer, Rubik, Spirit Breaker, and Ember. A lot of enabling slash fighting heroes, right? These heroes have no problem fighting early and running at the enemy team. And I think this is very important, right? They can force fights away from the Meepo, which will enable him to have a lot of space around the map, right? Because Meepo wants to farm for the majority of the early game. Now, of course, he can rotate from side lane to side lane based upon his farming patterns, but... In general, you have these spikes of timings when you have a few stat items, so NIP's draft definitely enables him. Now, what I've also heard enables Meepo is a lot of team fighters. Heroes such as Tide and Silencer are, are notable, primarily because when you jump in, in the team fights, you're going to get focused, primarily because you can't have any sort of BKB for staff. I mean, these items don't really work on Meepo, so having AoE backup to prevent you from getting bursted or counter initiated on is crucial. Now let's look at the enemy team. So PSG LGD has a Sand King, Nature's Prophet, Bane, Storm, and Void. Now this team does have a fair amount of AoE damage, right? They have Epicenter, I mean they have Chrono if you want to look at it like that. They have Wrath of Nature. But what they don't have is an overwhelming ability to fight in the early game, right? Storm Spirit needs items. Void doesn't do too much damage in the early game, especially if he has a bad start. Sand King is alright. Um, he's not going to necessarily be able to burst down one Meepo previous to his Blink Dagger or multiple Meepos. And Nature's Prophet just kind of insta-dies. Same thing with Bane, right? Bane is definitely not very good against Meepo because you can just whack him during Fiend's Grip and take off Nightmare of any Meepo if needed. So in general, what we're looking at here is the lack of ability to definitely siege towers. I know they have a Nature's Prophet, but with one Ion Shell, one Flame Guard, did I say Fade Bolt? One Fade Bolt. You're going to be able to defend towers, no problem. NIP has no problem defending towers and keeping the Meepo jungle safe. And basically, I think what the main thing is, believe it or not, I really wish I could get this down with Ace himself, but the thing is, Storm and Void take a while to come online. That's the main points here, right? They simply don't do as much damage as other mid laners up until a point. And a great thing about Meepo against Storm and Void is that typically Storm and Void can disengage from many different heroes, right? If you only have one stun, they'll both be able to get out. Against Meepo, that's not the case. He's easily going to be able to kill a Void, easily going to be able to kill a Storm, Prophet Bane, even Sand King, right? Sand King cannot stun out of a Meepo root. And that's a big deal, right? This is a huge, huge deal. Because basically, that means no hero can show on the map or split push waves if Meepo is missing. All right, now let's get into the gameplay for Meepo. All right, what is up? We are in the game now. This is Ace. He's playing safe lane Meepo, so this is not a mid Meepo guy, at least not in this video. I will do another video in the future, probably for the main site on mid Meepo, but still a lot of the farming patterns or basically all of the farming patterns past like the five minute mark, or at least when he hits the jungle are, are about the same, right? It's more about how you farm the jungle, the efficiencies you take, and we'll break down all of that and you can use that in any Meepo game. Also, the second half, um, what we'll be covering in this video is how you can take the fights, who you should jump, what's important, and just really looking into Meepo and his ability to fight. So first off, what I want to know about the safe lane Meepo is that he has a stout shield, six tangos, and two branches. What this allows you to do is buy a Quelling Blade as long as you get two bounty runes, which is crucial because you only have 49 damage, especially against a hero like Nature's Prophet. All he basically does in lane is use creep aggro. Like, no joke guys, this is the entire laning stage of Meepo. Um, he uses creep aggro and then uses poof to secure key CS, specifically 2 CS. He considered going for there, but specifically 2 CS and range creep CS is his main focus of poof. You notice here, he does something really, really interesting. Look at this guys. So 
he actually uses creep aggro by clicking the nature's profit to bring the melee creep towards him so that he can poof them both. Pretty, some pretty smart stuff there. So, he's able to pick up both of the CS with the poof. So, basically within the laning stage, if he can get two CS with poof, specifically range creep CS, then definitely go for it. Do not just hold this spell for the entire laning stage. You definitely want to use it for range creeps in particular. And honestly, that's about it for, for what's different in terms of laning uh, Meepo. Now, when you hit level 3, things change a little bit because you have quite a bit of kill potential. They don't really threaten it in this lane. The laning stage is played quite a bit different from what you'd expect. But what I really want to note about this is what his support is doing in lane. If you're ever going to lane a side lane Meepo, you need to instruct your support to do this or be the support and recognize that you have to do this. You must give Meepo as much solo XP as humanly possible, right? Like literally as much as possible because otherwise he's not going to be able to hit the spike where he can go jungle and the cool thing about giving Meepo solo XP is simply that he can go jungle for the rest of the time right because he can jungle then you give the under farm support the lane and catch back up on them in terms of the items he rushes he's immediately going to go for a wraith band and the slippers of agility he actually doesn't complete the slippers but putting a little bit of priority on wraith bands so that he can farm the side camp if needed now the enemy position for Sand King doesn't really allow him to do that throughout this game. The, the Sand King pressures the side camp quite a bit, but once the Sand King leaves, he starts taking it as much as possible. So especially once you have level 2 poof, you want to start looking into taking the side camp, especially if you have a Wraith Band in addition. Now this applies for mid as well, right? Once you hit your level 2 poof, probably around level 4, or specifically even level 5, you can look to take the side camp on Meepo as well. Especially from the mid lane, right? There's two very nearby camps, very similar to the side lane. So at this point, it's very important that you're using both of your Meepos to secure the CS. You notice what's very important is that he hits the creeps at the same exact time. I'm just going to go back quickly, just to show you that again. But for the CS, right, he hits them both with the Meepos at the same time. And this makes sure he's not going to get denied, right? I mean, those in particular weren't contested, but it's very common that you can get denies like this by hitting them both at the same time, or by just simply getting CS this way and you notice finally the side camp frees up with a level 3 poof this is even better of course and his wraith ban and he goes and takes it so it is important to keep that in mind cooler thing which you just saw a brief clip of there he even uses one meepo to pull because he's solo laning at this point so pretty cool job there i mean he only got one range creep but still that's a whole range creep denied and once again he's taking the side camp this is similar to mid and safe lane Meepo, you need to be taking camps in the downtime, especially past the 5 minute mark, you should start taking, if you haven't already, some side camps. And what you'll notice next is that the great thing about side lane Meepo is without using the courier, you can pick up your power treads, which is absolutely fantastic. This gives you a huge power spike in the laning stage, which is a massive deal. Now, because his main Meepo ran out of mana, he's going to send it back to base to finish up his Wraith Bands. He's even going to pick up a Clarity on this Meepo and use it on his side Meepo, right? So that's a cool way to just ship out a little bit of mana regeneration. It gets cancelled, but who really cares? So at this point in the lane, it's around 9 minutes in, and I think Ace is feeling a little bit threatened in the lane. And this can apply to both safe lane and mid lane, where he's feeling threatened, so he's going to send one Meepo off to jungle his own camp. Now the interesting thing is he's actually staying on strength treads. I think it's because he's afraid of getting ganked. Um, he doesn't want to be on low HP at any point. But typically if you're jungling, you definitely want to be on agility treads. Of course, switching to int when you're going to poof. So at this point, once his tower gets collapsed on, I think this applies to any Meepo game. You're basically just going to abandon and start taking jungle camps. At this point, there's really nothing crazy to it. You just go from camp to camp, double poofing every single one. As long as you're on intreads, you should have enough mana for this. But what he does cool here is that he wants to go for the bottom bounty rune, and instead of overcommitting, he's going to stack a camp with one Meepo. This is very good to do it throughout the game. Always keep in mind stacking because you're very, very good at taking stacks. So he stacks with one Meepo, picks up the bounty, and poofs over. So quite a nice a bit of efficiency here coming out from the ace Meepo. Now at this point, he's just dodging the hard farm. As we talked about in the draft, right, the enemy team, I mean, they can kind of take towers. They definitely take the bottom tower with the profit. Um, but at this point, they're not necessarily great at invading or they don't want to because they want to farm for themselves. So he has no problem farming the triangle. Now, in this game in particular, what I noticed is once he gets three Meepos, he's more open to taking Ancients. But previous to that, he isn't looking 
for the ancient camps. You notice now he's just gonna bounce between the triangle and the nearby top lane, see kind of what's going on. You can push in top, of course you don't want to take a side lane this far, but you notice right, two meepos, so he doesn't take the ancients. He's just gonna go from camp to camp. Really, honestly, nothing too, too special here. Um, just gonna farm the camps. They're opting to use only one poof. And looking at the timer, you notice, okay, here, this is what's crucial. Whenever you're farming a camp, guys, you need to be looking at the clock. This is basically for any hero that can take stacks. Storm, SF, whatever it is, Lina. You notice, when he's farming this camp, he's definitely looking at his clock. So you notice, that's why his camera starts shifting down. He's like, okay, the stack's coming up. So he lets the rest of his meeples clear it off as he hits level 10 and gets the stack. And at this point, he doesn't want to get Centaur Stomp, so he's not really going to farm a camp with three Meepos. Once you have three Meepos, you should not be farming the same camp with the three Meepos. You notice here, he splits them up a little bit and sends one off to the next camp. So basically, if you have two Meepos, use them to both farm each and every camp. But once you have three, split them up a little bit, and this will maximize efficiency. Also, at this point, you're going to notice he's going to start shifting towards the ancient camp that was stacked. I think if it isn't stacked here, he would consider taking it with two. But because it is stacked, he's able to take it with the three. So at this point, they want to go for a smoke. And whenever you smoke with Meepo, it's important to just leave the other ones farming. You don't need them in the vicinity because you're obviously just going to poof them in globally. So what you can do is just leave them farming like he's doing here. Very easy trick to keep up your efficiency as well as continue to apply map pressure. Now in pubs, what I want to say as a side note, something you're not really going to see too much this game, is you're going to be able to pick off a lot of people as Meepo in pubs, right? I mean, that's probably one of the most abusable parts. You can be anywhere, anytime with all your Meepos, as long as they're spread out. So do look for in pubs a lot of just split pushers. You're going to see a lot more of them, at least people split pushing alone with no backup. And this is something to abuse this Meepo. Now this is a pro match, so it's less likely to happen, but still. He is looking for ganks, because once you hit three Meepos, you're able to kill harder targets, such as a Faceless Void, if he's able to get on top of them, including, right, even here, Storm, he's able to get three nets in a row, and pick up a kill. So you notice, once again, this is the last time I'm going to talk about this farming pattern, but, right, he farms one camp with one Meepo, and then farms the rest with two other. So he's pretty much always constantly splitting them up once he has three. What I would say about Roshan, because Meepo is a hero that can Roshan, is once you have your E-Blade, that's a good time to look to start Roshan. You're going to have plenty of damage to take it, but you still might need a little bit of team backup. I believe you can solo it uh, as long as you have proper micro with the E-Blade, but it is much easier to do with teammates. Uh, essentially, the point is, if you have E-Blade, you should consider Roshan. So what they do here is they take a very successful top fight, I'm not going to talk about fighting too much here. He's basically just running in, auto-attacking the, the targets that he sees. Really nothing too complex about it. He does go for the supports first, if you want to note that. But honestly, Meepo can kill cores at this stage of the game, especially with this E-Blade. So that's not necessarily something I would point out. He does happen to go for the Bane, but definitely not a necessity as Meepo. Right, and here's what we were talking about. They take a successful fight. The map opens up a little bit. They have very good vision for Roshan as well. And he pushes in bottom with one Meepo, and then finally poofs him in to take Roshan. So it looks like he probably could solo this if needed, but still a little bit of teammate help never hurts. What I would recommend as a goal for all you guys is to have around 10 CS per minute. Now in the early game, that's not possible. Up to the 10 minute mark, I would say go for around 60 CS by the 10 minute mark. If you have played Meepo before, if you're new, that's going to be a little bit hard at first, but for any Meepo player or anyone who wants to get better, I would say have at least 60 at 10. You definitely can get a lot more than that. That's potentially quite low actually in a lot of games, but do set that as a goal. At the 20 minute mark, I would say you want to have at least 200 based upon all these farming techniques and patterns that we've showed here. And of course, once again, it could be higher than that, but Ace has roached and he has shown up to a few frights, right? He's 3-0. So you can't even get higher than this in terms of CS, which maybe you want to just practice in a game. You just actually don't gank at all and just focus on your par farming patterns. I think that's totally fine. But you notice he's still averaging around 10 CS per minute at this point, which I believe is a very good marker for him at this stage of the game. So you notice something that's very important is that he only gets the blink after the E-Blade. This basically enables him to farm even faster. We already talked about the Roshan. And now that if he wants to blink on someone, he actually can probably guaranteed kill them because he has a quite a bit more damage. Now, the standard micro for Meepo is that you're simply going to blink in, net, and then poof the other ones in. Of course, this Void has a BKB, but it, that's basically your, your, your kill on anyone. Uh, at this point, that's, that's really just for pickoffs. 
We'll talk about a little bit what you need to do in team fights, who you should prioritize, or what you need to look for. But basically, that's that's the simplest part about Meepo. Honestly, I don't even think this hero is necessarily that hard in terms of ganking. You basically just poof them in and net, net, net. Um, that's something you can easily practice in a lobby. You notice here, he poofs in, he nets, he nets, he nets. I mean, you just have to really practice. Uh, I don't I don't think necessarily the micro is particularly crazy for Meepo. Right, you can get to an insane level of where you're moving each and every meepo around. But honestly, that's not what's important to, to learn how to win with this hero. It's more so about learning how to just jump to correct targets, looking for pickoffs in the side lanes, but most importantly, your farming patterns. Now at this point, he has Aegis, and he feels pretty comfortable with sieging. Um, of course, he doesn't want to overcommit. This is very important to do. Meepo is very bad at overcommitting. I even consider Meepo somewhat one and done. That's how I look at him when I'm playing against him. I don't play as him necessarily, but when I see Meepo, I want them to overcommit. Because often, it's a little bit hard if they are not giga snowballing to actually continue finding targets, um, especially when diving a high ground. So you notice here, Ace isn't diving high ground. He's just sieging. And I would recommend you do this yourself, especially if you're going to go high ground. Do not dive. Unless you were like 10, 20k net worth ahead. Interestingly enough, uh, he's going to go for a Scotty next. To be honest, I don't really, I can't explain why exactly. Um, I think it's because he believes he needs some survivability against the, uh, the the Faceless Void Chrono and the Sanking Epicenter just to survive. So he's prioritizing HP over E-Blade, right? Because the E-Blade only gives you 10 strength while Scotty gives you 25 and another 225 health. So, Scotty is better for survivability, and in this game, he prioritizes survivability much, much higher than the overall DPS. This is kind of a judgment you're going to have to make for yourself. Basically, if they can kill you and you think they're pretty one and done, meaning they have to commit a lot of spells to kill you, and if you can survive through you win the fight, then go for more HP. But otherwise, you're going to want to go for a Hex after your E-Blade, or just another E-Blade if you feel like Hex is unnecessary for kill targets. Something you can do as a Meepo in pubs is send one to a, a side lane. I just want to say this. Um, it is totally cool to do that in pubs. There's going to be a lot less map pressure and a lot more uh, miscoordinated plays from the enemy team. Of course, in any pubs, that's just how it is. So it is okay to have two Meepos from top and one bottom and look for pickoffs. I think that's something uh, a snoop. But that is something that is quite good, especially in the uncoordinated pub setting. So upcoming here is... Ace's first death, and let's talk about why. Basically, what you don't really want to do on Meepo is overcommit on some weak target and leave yourself susceptible to team fights. So, basically, he has to expose himself first. I would say what is a lot better, and a trend we'll notice about the Meepo this game, is that whenever he's able to initiate second, he's less likely to die. But whenever he has to go in first, he is going to perish. And I think that is quite a bit of an interesting trend throughout this game. Notice here he gets epied, he gets gripped, he gets storm sipped. And he dies, right? Because they were literally able to commit every single hero's spells on him. No joke. They used five hero spells on him to kill him. Now, that's all they have to do, right? Because, I mean, he is the majority of their, their team's damage. But if the, if the fight is more developed and he jumps in, that's not going to be something they're able to do. And that's very important to note. That's probably a very common trend for every single Meepo game, not just one like this. You want to go in second... So that you can make sure that you're not going to get bursted by literally every single spell. Or the important ones that will naturally kill you. So at this point, you really need to play around Roshan for Meepo. I mean, Aegis on Meepo is basically everything. It's what allows you to take map control. And of course, that's what he's going for here. Now, a fight breaks out, and he's just going to right-click people. Nothing really for, much for me to say here. Make sure you're just selecting every Meepo and auto-attacking the nearest unit if you do get jumped. And that's, that's about it for this fight. I mean, they don't get the Roshan, but once again, don't panic when you get jumped. Basically, just try to select your Meepos and hit the nearby unit because you do get Lifesteal now. So it's very important to stay alive, to just simply hit people. That's often your best way out in the majority of fights. Remember never to stop farming. Even though he has three items at this point, he's still wiping through the jungle, right? He's just basically killing every camp at the speed of light now. And that's important to do, right? You don't want to fall off as Meepo. I actually do see this common when I play against Meepos, as long as it's not like Ink Meepo, uh, then they, they, they commonly fall off because they start just trying to fight the whole game. And if they die once, they go for another fight and another fight and another fight. Do spend some downtime farming. Um, it is very important to get to your next item. Okay, so another fight breaks out here. And honestly, this is why the farming patterns are so important. It's not like I can say, oh, what did he do so correctly here to win this fight? 
It's more so about the fact that he just had enough items and his Dark Seer had enough items to keep him alive, right? He gets Chronoed and he's basically taking zero damage. This is partly due to the Crimson and the Dark Seer items, but also just due to the raw amount of HP that he has. He's able to tank up the spells and kill the enemy team. It's really as simple as that. This is purely because he has a lot of items, right? He even ends up dying. And this fight doesn't go so well. This is his second death of the game. But you notice, it was still at least close. This is PSG LGD we're talking about. In most games, people aren't going to be this farm. If you're keeping up your farming rates, and you can be at a 20 net worth around the 35 minute mark, you're going to be fine in your games. But you notice, he stayed alive a, a lot longer than he should have due to nice itemization from his Darks here, right? But also, just staying up in net worth. He had his second Scotty for that fight, and it didn't work out, but I still wanted to mention it. Just as a side note, for all of you non-Meepo players, you can actually poof two illusions. Um, in this case, he gets an illusion rune and just sends it bottom to push out the wave. Uh, they are very, very strong because they're stat-based, so always do use illusions. They're extremely powerful on your hero. Alright, so here is coming up a very important fight for NIP. Let's pay attention very closely to Ace's camera and who he jumps. So, finally, the fight doesn't break out on top of him, which I think is a big reason and why the fight actually went in their favor. They went on Fada instead of the Ace Meepo, which allows him to get on top of the Faceless Void. So what is notable there? Why can he even jump the Void? Right, Void is Chrono. How is this possible? So if we look at the fight, once again, he pays attention to, to the fact that the Void kind of makes a weird play. He commits the Mask of Madness here and his Time Walk, meaning that he can't Chrono and he can't Time Walk. And Ace recognizes this, right? Seeing this, he jumps on top of Ame and punishes that mistake. So basically, him being able to go in second here allows him to burst the Void without him get getting off his spells. So the trend I'm noticing, at least within this game, is that him being able to go in second and choose or slash burst crucial targets is the difference between winning a fight or not. Now at this point, once again, play for Roche. Aegis is crucial in Meepo. If you ever win a fight, this should be the first thing that comes to your head. And in this case, he's able to pick up an Aegis. And then basically, once you have three items plus a Blink and Aegis, you should be able to just walk up the high ground in a lot of your pubs, especially if you're the only one farming efficiently. And this is very common in a lot of pubs. So you're just now, at this point, you're just one of the fastest sieging heroes in Dota. Not much to say about this. They get some pickoffs, they get Aegis, and now they hit the racks. This is the strategy for Meepo. This is the pub strategy. It's not necessarily some giga amount of pickoffs. While those are good, they often can be risky and get you killed. Or just don't even give you that much gold. The way to play, honestly, is to simply get a lot of items, get Aegis, and then take a fight. Or take a fight, get Aegis, and then go high ground. This is the way to play on Meepo. Because you're strictly much stronger. Like, in pubs, you can basically 4v5 strictly because you have four units right and they can get that strong if people aren't buying things like four staffs and glimmer caves to kite you or have the proper defensive items you're just going to be able to wipe through them strictly with a net worth lead and the fact that you have two lives so really keep this in mind so here once again a fight breaks out and once again he's not getting gone on this is what's important to note he's not getting gone on unfortunately he gets this blink cancelled but now he's just going to look for the void once again so he feels like he can burst the Void. There's a lot of heroes that Meepo can kill that others can't. So he kills off the Faceless Void. And at this point, he's just auto-attacking. He's going to kite out his dying Meepo. Which just takes a lot of micro skills. Honestly, that's just practice. But honestly, you just want to go in second and then jump key targets. Really, because a lot of AoE crowd control... Um, you might need to hex certain heroes if they do have AoE crowd control. But if they're committed in, then just go for key core kills. Because you're very good at killing heroes such as OD, Void, um, any hero that would typically naturally be able to man fight back or at least disengage if they need to, um, doesn't have that luxury against Meepo a large majority of the time. So yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit, all these different tips and tricks on Meepo. I'm sorry that I'm not a Meepo main, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I'll consider learning this hero to really go giga in depth about the hero, but I think this is a very good starting point or at least pushing point for any of you Meepo players when trying to learn this hero. Because to be frank, it's about the farming, guys. It really is. Being able to hit an E-Blade timing before anyone else in Dota, and then insta-bursting course is beyond powerful, especially in pubs when people are not that coordinated. Hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit. 
And of course, comment down below what you thought about this, if there's any sort of Meepo hotkeys you use, because to be frank, there's a lot of great discussion going on in the Game Leap Discord about Meepo hotkeys, which I think is wonderful, because there are some things I just simply can't talk about, and this is one of them. So down in the comments below, let us know, let the community know what hotkeys you use for Meepo. I think it would help out a lot of people. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, but before I leave you, I just want to let you know and remind you that over at GameLeap.com, we have thousands and thousands of guides made just like this one by top tier pros so that you can learn the game of Dota in depth and gain MMR as fast as possible.